Alright guys and girls, Shardy back for another update and as promised I'm going to show you the PLC, Proflux Control Computer Software um, because a lot of people have been asking me basically can you show us a bit more about the automation and what I'm doing with that so I'm going to give you a quick overview of the back end and I mean uh, as quick as possible so excuse me if I run through this very fast and I talk a little bit fast um, because it's the only way I'm going to get through uh, most of it. Um, Basically, uh, this we're in the general settings page here. As you can see, you've got clock settings, uh, location, alarm. That's basically whether the alarm's loud or quiet. Um, we've got uh, basic settings, which you can read there, and we're connected uh, via RS-232, which is my USB connection connected to the Belkin wirelessly, so I'm able to connect to this software wirelessly. Okay, moving on, uh, illumination. Basically, I've not used this, but what this does is allow you to set illumination settings if you are using uh, one to 10 volt interfaces for lighting. For example, um, you know, a lot of these individual LED units, you can plug it, them into, um, into the Profilux and do thunderstorm stuff all manually. Uh, in other words, configure your own lighting. Uh, which would probably work out a lot cheaper than buying something like these Radions, which I've got. Um, so I've not used it, but looks pretty good. Processes. These are all your timers, basically, which, um, as you've seen, I've started. I'll show you this one, for example. I started dosing alkalinity in the previous video I've shown you. Um, doing 20 mils a day, so that's 10 dosings a day of 2 mils, which allows me to do a nice progressive dosing and not shock the system. Um, you can see there the days of the week and that is set timer 1 and as you'll see later on when I run you through the socket functions you'll see how I've assigned that to a particular plug plug unit um, extras you've got pumps Eheim um, pumps and stuff uh, which I, I don't use it but if you're using these pumps you can configure them into certain um, formats of the, uh, wave modes just like the uh, the wave box on the Vortec does um, but obviously I use that uh, independently. Um, probe sensor controls. Okay, so these this is where you set like the nominal value that you would like the pH to be at the moment. I'm not doing it because I'm not controlling anything. But in the future I could set this nominal value say to 8.3. And if it deviates by a certain amount I can get it to do certain things. For example, turn my dosing pump with my alkaline alkalinity on and start dosing the system to get it back up to 8.3 something I might consider in the future um, so these are all the settings these are the calibration settings here um, same for the temperature yeah, pretty much exactly the same um, I have got this set to a deviation actually um, which basically will turn on my heaters when it goes too cold um, nominal value is 78.8 that I've got it set at um, so yep that's the, that's that i've got it enabled to um uh, there's the, sorry there's the calibration data um and it's the same for the conductivity um i'm possibly thinking in the future of dosing well yeah basically dosing salt water instead of fresh water for the ato if the salinity falls too low but uh, i found um that the salinity is staying pretty constant at the moment without having to do that but it I think I am going to set that up eventually. Um, Radox, I'm still waiting for my null plug, which is supposed to be arriving uh, very soon. In fact, I need to chase him up about that because I think he's he's bullshitted me. I don't think he sent it. Um, these are my levels. As you can see, level 1 and 2 is set to min-max control. I know it says level 2 is not enabled, but that's just a, a default setting for min-max control. Level 1 is the max and level 2 is the min. Level 3 is the auto top off, um, which is self explanatory. If it drops below a certain level, it just tops off fresh water. Um, and I can also, that's the bit where I will I'll do some programmable logic to, uh, to, for it to decide which peristaltic pump to turn on uh, depending on the salinity. I'll show you a little bit about how I would do that later on. Um, but um, yeah, so if we look at the measurement data, we can see that I have currently got the pH, temperature and conductivity. Um, I can go to display graphics. Sorry. I can... Um, let's have a look here. Uh, for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why, 
I'm just pressing load not used that this much actually um, hmm it usually gives me a read and save option there um, but it, I think because I've just done it previously um, it's not letting me do it display graphics hold on it's probably I have to go and uh, bear with me because I've not used this that much there we go that's the test one right so I because I just saved one previously um, uh, this is the the measurement data for the past since the 18th to the 24th and it's showing the pH swing which has been between 7.93 and 8.13 a little bit low that's why I've started dosing the alkalinity temperature's been pretty constant did have a shoot up to 79.6 on the 21st which I think was because my wife turned the radiator in fact I know it was because I turned it down the next day she put the radiator up by the back, the back of the fresh tank which I gave her a little telling off for uh, but apart from that it's pretty stable conductivity I remember it dropped a little bit to 102.388 here so I topped up a little bit more that's the only salt uh, uh, top up I've done since running the system um, so I'm thinking that I will do that little um, function of auto uh, auto salt top up down the line but that's basically gives you some of the measurement data um, remote control um, basically this I can remote control the actual front panel and it shows you what it's displaying at the moment I never use it because it, there's no need I can do everything from the PLC um, control here anyway so uh, I don't know why it, it's, it's an extra feature I suppose but um, so go to the socket functions this is in system um, you sh you've got socket functions, your 1 to 10 volt interfaces, your digital inputs and uh, different types of plug bars than the PAB. In fact if I show you here on the system you can see I've got three uh, power bars connected to the um, to the to the Profilux and the digital inputs is actually my um, I believe it's my dosing pumps which I've got assigned which I'll show you here in the socket functions um pull that over and I can get the show you the description of what's going on so these are my socket functions one and two is heater one and two and that's set to the function temperature one heater which basically acts as a little program that turns on the heaters should they drop below the nominal value um in fact if you look there you can see um that it, that's how you do it. you set the function one to temperature one um and set that to the heater and that's how that controls the temperature um, going over socket 6 which is my skimmer that's just set to always on um, 8 is my main return pump which is set to water 1 inverted and so is the MP40's right and left as you've seen in an earlier video when I do my automatic water change um, basically they turn off um, the main return pump turns off when the level 2 the minimum level is hit and so do the mp40s and they turn back on when the maximum level is hit so that's how that's done with water one inverted uh, function there um, we have got refugium lights uh, set to a timer two um, I'll just show you quickly actually that if you look at a very simple timer two is basically refugium daylight every day of the week it turns off at 10 o'clock turns back on at five o'clock just something I'm testing out some people say run it 24 hours some people say off during the day on at night I'm just trying the off during the day and on at night thing but I've not noticed many uh, uh, pH benefits from that to be honest so um, you know I, I don't know we'll see about that one um, but going, that's what I've done there you can see I've done that by setting it to the timer two. very simple that's the refugium lights radion LEDs set to always on and that's simply because I'm controlling them through the EcoSmart config utility they're programmed separately so I just leave the plug unit always on there um, moving down this is where the third PAB plug bar is then over in the water storage room starts from 13 and this uh, is programmable logic now this is where it gets a little more complex um, and I'll show you this in a second but I've had to set this salt drain pump to programmable logic 3 I'll show you that in a second the auto top off pump which is over there that's simple enough it's set to water 3 which if, you, if water 3 corresponds to level 3 which is set up to auto top off um, 
so that's that's how I'm doing my auto top off um, and the salt fill pump is set to programmable logic 6 um, I'll show you that in a second but just to finish the final thing is my dosing pump 1 which is doing the alkalinity is set to timer 1 and I showed you that before um, so now moving over to the programmable logic um, basically uh, as you'll see these, this programmable logic is how you kind of customize um, certain functions to how you want them to happen um, so as you can see they were set to 3 and 6 before 3 is very simple it starts the drain pump for the automatic salt water change and all it is is the two inputs um, if, you, if you're familiar with boolean logic it's AND, NAND, OR gates and all of that kind of stuff if you're not you can look it up on the internet it's fairly fairly simple but basically this AND function needs two inputs first input is always on um, and the second one is set to timer 10 which basically means when timer 10 is active then the salt drain pump is going to start um, then you can see 6 is the delayed on that's the salt fill pump and basically I set this delayed on to however long it takes me to drain the system to what I want for example if I'm doing a 30% water change and I want to drain 30% of the volume say if it takes 3 minutes to drain that um, I will set it to 3 minutes 30 delayed on 30 seconds is the time it takes before the actual um, return pump stops um, before it actually hits that delayed on point um, so I'll set it to 3 minutes 30 and then when it's finished draining the salt fill pump will automatically come on it's set to programmable logic 5 which is basically um, the water 1 function which is the min level so that it starts when the water hits that minimum level um, the delayed on starts basically um, so that's just a brief very quick overview of how programmable logic works um, I mean obviously you can see um, you just set basically the input that one's water one, that one's always on, and it's an AND function. Um, so I know that I don't have time to go into much more in detail. The email side of things basically is um, I've got emails working from the PC, but that's not great for me because it means I have to have the PC connected to the Profilux, but I've, I've not managed to get it configured so that it comes directly from the Profilux. The emails are sent directly from the Profilux. So I'm buying an Ethernet cable and hardwiring it um, because I've not managed to do it wirelessly. So I'm going to test it wired um, to diagnose that and try and get that fully working. Um, so that's the only little glitch I've got at the moment is getting the emails from the Profilux computer wirelessly uh, to notify me. And if I'm honest with you, having looked at that email part of it, that's one part of it which I think falls down a little bit because you have to put certain codes in, um, in for the so that you know what it's emailing you about and I think they could have come up with a better more simpler function there Profilux for how they um, how they, how you're notified about what particular problem it's emailing you about um, so this video has taken quite a bit of time we're almost coming up to 15 minutes and, I, and I've just, just skimmed everything pretty briefly but I hope that gives you an insight into how I'm automating things with the Profilux um, I know I've talked very fast, but uh, I've had to. But thanks everybody for watching. Uh, and by the way, thank you. I've hit 200 subscribers now, which I'm really happy about. So um, yeah, keep subbing to me. Uh, I'm going to keep coming out with these videos, showing you the full journey. We're right in the first stages, the early stages of the tank here, and hopefully it's going to go on for years. So um, yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for your comments. Uh, love everybody and all your input that you give me. Uh, so this is Shadi signing out.